Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about politics as historiology and uh, the division between left-right politics in terms of their uh, historiological uh, origins. So first I'll just explain a few concepts which uh, uh, I've touched on in other videos regarding uh, Martin Heidegger's philosophy of historiology and authentic and inauthentic being. Um, those uh, being first are uh, the division between uh, Geschink and history, history um, in German. Geschink being more like a, a story which could be a historical or um, or fictional, um, but then history being a, a, that a story that is the art of the historian specifically, uh, that regarding um, the history of humanity. And um, Heidegger uses this term, uh, um, history, and it's uh, the history of uh, a culture, a nation, uh, a group of cultures at a certain time period, uh, or hu humanity in general, what we usually call history in English, he uses that ref to refer to also uh, the personal history, uh, the history of an individual, and uh, the connection here is in terms of, is built by um, historiology. The historiologizing of uh, of uh, the past in, into a into a hist into a coherent history is comparable also to our human beings. Explain to themselves their own life story, which is a fundamental uh, part of uh, self-identification, I guess, how a person identifies himself to themselves. Then historicity is uh, the extent to which something is historical. But uh, um, whenever we we talk about um, about historiology, uh, we are always referring to, I guess. Um, in terms of, uh, at least in terms of, uh, inauthentic being, the now ideal. That is the idea that uh, um, uh, the past is a progress towards the present. This is built around uh, the fact that we are impacted and affected by the present in ways which we aren't affected by the past. And we assume that uh, the phenomena in the past which led to the, the phenomena today which affect us in our, in our immediate environment uh, were sort of, uh, fatalistically uh, designed just so that this uh, moment in time in which we live could be. Uh, this is ultimately a f form of inauthentic being. I spoke already of uh, authentic and inauthentic being, where in auth authentic uh, being, a person lives towards their own uh, future with anticipatory resoluteness, which is ultimately towards their own death, because death is the ultimate limit of all being in living, uh, living things. And then inauthentic being is when a person merely constructs their own life story in terms of an immediate reaction to that which is present at hand, to the immediate environment. Like a plant bending towards the light, they react merely to stimuli. Um, but w w usually when the history is seen as a progress towards uh, the now ideal, what immediately happens is the idea that uh, history will continue to progress through the now towards the future and that the future will be ultimately an ideal version, an idealized version of the now, where the most positivistic uh, elements of the present um, will be uh, expanded upon and enhanced so that in the future will be even better. And uh, a progressivist attitude to history uh, will create an ideal where uh, those elements which, um, an idea where those elements which affect us positively could be focused on and uh, exemplified and amplified to the point where they will um, lead to uh, new phenomena which will affect us even greater. And this is the fundament of left-wing politics, where the historiological ideal is placed as an abstraction into the, the distant future. And this abstract ideal will be manifested in, say, ideas like a... Uh, to give the more sort of... Um, uh, hyperbolic sort of uh, 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 crazy stuff that we would hear uh, it would be like the idea of uh, say luxury uh, gay space communism or whatever some people let leftists talk about how uh, like we'll all uh, perfectly harvest or all of the energy from uh, every planet like the more sort of uh, the Dyson sphere and all of this stuff um, this is uh, obviously nonsense and uh, anyone in their right mind can say that the Dyson sphere idea is nonsense um, Many scientists uh, have come out and said that's absolute nonsense, and lots of people waste their time uh, thinking about it because it satisfies their sort of uh, their egotistical creation of uh, of the now ideal. 
the idea that uh, uh, the exploitation of the of uh, of the earth that we benefit from today will ultimately lead to a new ideal, which will be the exploitation of every planet in existence, and will harvest the energy from the sun and stuff like that, um, which is uh, factually impossible. But uh, then, of course, uh, in right-wing politics, we have seen the the, the absolute adverse of that where the historiological ideal is placed as an abstraction into the distant past. And here we say, see, again to give, an uh, to give a hyperbolic example of like the, how the Nazis believed in a, um, in a sort of a, a golden age of like say Cro-Magnon Cro uh, uh, Atlantean uh, Aryans or whatever. Um, and then uh, the muddling of the of the peoples and what have you led to this uh, eventual uh, uh, degeneracy into the into the present, and then things will continue towards a collapse. And like the philosophy of uh, um, of uh, people like uh, Oswald Spengler and what have you, but they see society is about to collapse and everything. Of course, society is not about to collapse. Uh, it's not true. But uh, uh, people who put the, the the now ideal into the distant past want society to collapse, they, want, they see it as an ideal and it, it satisfies their their understanding of history. Society must collapse because uh, uh, things are ten times worse now than they were ten uh, you know, a hundred years ago or, two, or you know, a thousand years ago and um, and so uh, their, their inauthentic understanding of history then leads to uh, an idea that, uh, that, that the future will be uh, such that it really isn't. Of course in reality if we look back at history and we see there are periods of uh, of um, of dark ages and what have you, like say uh, the Bronze Age collapse or the the classical uh, the, the fall of classical civilization, um, and we see you know this uh, this progress from uh, from agriculture to to the space age uh, wasn't as linear as people often think, and there's no reason to say that uh, consistent progress will just continue indefinitely. Um, likewise. There have been moments of uh, of great uh, of valor and uh, integrity and uh, and say all of the the right wing uh, virtues in the not so distant past as well in uh, in uh, various societies and those uh, you know those sort of uh, ideals still exist today in certain societies and so both of these ideas are ultimately uh, very mis misleading and it's all built upon the idea that a uh, the historiological ideal is either in, in the dist as an abstraction in the distant future, which is left-wing politics, or else as an abstraction in the distant past, which is right-wing politics. So, uh, now, this construction of the present at hand, uh, just to touch on one final point before I leave off, um, we could say, you know, the Anthropocene is now, we could look at the way human beings impact the environment. You could say uh, this impacting of the environment by human beings is indicative of the Anthropocene, which is which is part of the present, the present that is now, as opposed to the pre-Anthropocene uh, period, which is the past that is back then. But we could also say we could look at the atom and look at the m exact position in a millionth of a nanosecond where that electron is right there. Uh, as opposed to uh, another position as it orbits around uh, the nucleus of the atom. And we could say that that there is the present. And there's really no end to how we could uh, divide and uh, break down uh, the present to, uh, to a smaller and more minute now. The present is ultimately an illusion created by the ego, built around uh, uh, Dasein's understanding of, uh, of its immediate environ. To understand uh, history more authentically, as Heidegger believed, we would have to um, we would have to uh, to look towards um, the death of all things ultimately, and uh, and entropy, and how things exist towards their end, because everything in existence, in as much as it is, is towards its end. This is a, a point I might clarify more in a future video, but to run through it basically, uh, quickly. Uh, Things are defined in terms of their potential, their potential is limited by possibility. The ultimate limit of possibility is the inexistence of the thing. The inex the, uh, when a thing ceases to be that thing. But that ultimate limitation is, uh, is also, must be uh, a part of its identity. 
a thing cannot be forever. Uh, and uh, everything, as much as it is, it is towards ultimately an end. If anything has a limit, uh, it is towards an end. That is towards, uh, in living, in the case of living things, that is towards death. And so death is, um, is, uh, is, not, the, is not the end of life, but rather is the completion of life. And all things are towards death in a sense. Uh, it sounds pretty morbid to talk about death so much like that, but uh, uh, I don't see it as anything morbid. Um, so yes, perhaps I'll, I'll talk more about that in the future, and of course I'll talk more about how uh, the continuum of space and time, I guess, how, uh, time, how, um, how uh, space and time are really the same thing, which space is uh, the placeholder for moments and time is the, the place. There are many, uh, uh, which are totally absurd and ridiculous, like uh, the, like the giving Ritalin to young boys and um, order of all boys in a ADHD, supposedly.